One of my awesome regular viewers asked how to make a blackboard with animated chalk in Blender. So in this two-parter, I'm going to show you how to do this with the power of grease pencil and material nodes. Today, we will do modeling and materials, as well as a quick showcase of how the animation aspect works using an animation I made for this tutorial. Whereas in the next episode, we'll make the chalk animation as well as the grease pencil aspects of things. To start off, I'll set up my workspace so I can start modeling. To start off with my modeling, I'm going to press Shift A, under mesh, I'm going to left click cube. And I'll press S, Z, and then 0 0.05. Then I'll press S, X, and then 1.5. Now that's done, I'll press Tab, Edit Mode, and I'll press 3 on the keyboard. I'll press Alt, left click on the face loop on the outside, and then E, S, and Shift Z to scale on only the X and Y axis. I'll scale that out a little bit, and to make all these corners even, I'm going to press S and then Y, and try and even that out a little bit. Then I'll press 3 on the keyboard again, Alt left click to select this face loop and I'll press E and then Z and pull it up just a tiny bit. Then I'll press tab to go back into object mode. And this is our chalkboard so far. If you haven't already, I'm going to save my project. So I'll press control S and I'll save it in a spot. I'm going to call my one blackboard chalk 2.blend since I already have one called blackboard chalk. Now I'm going to press tab to go back into edit mode. Then I'll press 2 to enter edge select mode. And I'm going to press alt left click on this outside edge. And I'm just going to pull up a tiny bit just to give it a little bit of a dip in. But there should do. Now I'm going to left click my material properties which is this circle here. Then what I'll do is change my timeline here to the shader editor. And then I'll press plus new. And I'm going to call this material wood border. Then I'll drag out my side panel here. And I'm going to create a second material. And this one. I'm going to press plus new and I'm going to call it blackboard. Then I'll press tab to enter edit mode. I'll press free on the keyboard. Then with my wood border, I'm going to change the base color to something quite orangey just so we can differentiate between the two. And the blackboard, I'll give it a black color. In face select mode, which is free on the keyboard, I'll left click the center face left click the blackboard material and press assign and now we have these two different materials assigned this gets started with our wooden border material i'll drag out this shader editor panel here just so we can see what we're doing zoom in and i'm going to press shift a then under texture i'm going to left click noise texture i'll plug the factor into the base color then i'll press shift a and i'll search for my texture coordinate plug my object into the vector and I'll press shift A under vector and I'll take my mapping node and plug it in between the two. Alternatively, if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled, which is free and built into Blender, you can left click the noise texture and just press control T. Then I'm going to adjust my scale value here. For now, I'm going to do the Y axis and you can see I'm making a more wood like looking material here. I'll set this to around 15 just now. You can also change the scale of your noise texture to make this bigger or smaller. I find that this value is good for me just now. I'll left click and drag these three nodes and pull them along and I'm going to press shift A then under converter I'm going to left click color ramp. Now I'm going to pick my colors. So I'll change my black color to a kind of dark brown color and I'll change my white color to something a bit brighter to give us this kind of oak finish. To get a better look at what our thing is looking like we're going to go into our render preview and turn on our HDRI. I'm going to change my render engine to Eevee just so it works a little bit better for this video. In the world properties I'm going to press plus new and where it says color I'm going to left click the yellow dot and choose environment texture. Then I'll press the open button and I'm just going to select the HDR file which you can find in the description to download. Then in my render properties panel under film I'm going to turn it to transparent. And there we are now we finished the border. Then I'm going to change my render engine to Eevee just to make my recording process a bit smoother. Also my wood border, we could make a roughness map, but for now, I'm just gonna keep this material super simple and I'll maybe just turn the roughness down a tiny bit. Now we can move on to our blackboard material. So I'll left click it and you can see the material inside of our shader editor has changed. I'll press shift A and I'm gonna search for a noise texture again. I'll press shift A and I'll search for my texture coordinate. You can also find this in the input panel on the shift a menu. Then I'll plug my object coordinate into the vector and my factor into the normal. Essentially what I'm trying to do here is create a bumpy effect with this noise texture. So if I plug my factor into the surface, you can see this is what our texture is looking like. I'll turn up the scale a bit since we're going to want the bump details to be very small. Maybe I'll change it to around 200. And if I zoom in, you can see all those little grains. I have plugged it into the normal, but of course it's not going to work without using some kind of bump node or something like that. So I'll press shift A, then under vector, I'll left click bump. If you're confused to how some of these nodes are working, you can check out my texture basics course. 
course, I have a whole episode dedicated to the bump node, as well as normals if you're interested in those. So I'll plug my factor into the height here, and now you can see we're starting to get more of our grainy effect. Since this material will be quite rough, I'm going to change my roughness value up quite high. Around 0.9 or so should do nicely. I'm also going to change the strength of my bump down to maybe just a point, point 0.15. If I zoom in, you can see this is the kind of detail we created. You can also edit this detail by changing some of these noise texture parameters. For example, I could distort it a little bit, or I could change this roughness value. There, I think that looks quite nice. Now we've done that, I'm going to go ahead and give you a rough idea of what our animation will look like using a small animation I made. Let's group some of these nodes together. I'll shift and box select these three nodes, press Ctrl J. I'm going to change my frame here by left clicking on it and then left click on the label and change it to bump. And that will make my bump details nice and organized for us. Then I'll press Shift A and I'm going to left click image texture. Then I'm going to press open and I'm going to find the image sequence which I've left in the download below. The folder should just be called Akira 2D1. I'll open it up and press A to select all the images and press open image. You can see this animation contains 24 frames so I'm going to quickly change my timeline here by changing from the shader editor into the timeline and I'm going to make my end frame let's say 24. We'll keep it on repeat. Now in order to see our animation we would have to plug it into the base color. But as you can see, we're having a bit of an issue. We can only see Akira's ear. So I'm going to press Shift A, then under Input, I'll left click Texture Coordinate and plug the UV into the vector. But the issue is, we haven't actually edited this UV yet. So I'm going to left click and drag out another panel and I'm going to change it to UV Editor. If I press Tab, enter Edit Mode and press A, you can see we've got our kind of default UV layout. First thing I'm going to do is back in Object Mode, I'm going to press Ctrl A, I'm going to apply the scale and I'll also apply the rotation as well. Press Tab to go back into Edit Mode. I'm going to left click my center face since that's all we really need to worry about as I'm not planning on baking the rest of these textures and even if we did we could always do it in a separate UV and I'm going to press U and I'll choose project from view making sure I'm in this top view I'll also check scale to bounds and now you can see our chalkboard is taken up this entire HD image here. If you want to adjust it, you can press A in your UV editor and just press S and X, and that way I can make it wider or thinner. I'm gonna leave it as it is. If I go into my material preview and turn on auto refresh, you can see our animation is starting to work now. And as you can see, when we press the arrow keys to go through the frames, you can see it is in fact moving. But we've actually got these the wrong way around. We want to have it so the white area is what's drawn in. So to do that, I'm simply going to press Shift A and I'll search for an invert node. And now you can see we're playing it on chop. There are a few math nodes and stuff we could use to edit how thick these lines look, but that's not the focus of this tutorial, so I'm not going to go over that just now. In the next video, we'll be covering how to make a simple chalk animation and line it up with a 3D model of a chalk we'll be making. But with that, I'd like to thank you all very much for watching. And if you did enjoy, please make sure to like the video and share it with someone who you think would find it useful. Thank you again, and I'll see you in the next video.